All right, in this next sequence of lessons, I'll offer a quick crash course on Python. Again, this is intended to be a refresher for those who haven't perhaps played around with Python in a while or, or who are familiar with other programming languages but haven't actually played around with Python yet. Um, if you proceed throughout these lessons and you understand, you know, 80%, 90% or everything that's going on, you're all set to get started with, with Pandas. If you understand most of it but you don't understand a single concept, by all means look it up. And certainly if you don't understand anything that I'm talking about, because I will kind of go through it pretty quickly, then I do recommend taking some time to study a little bit of Python before you begin the course. It's nothing extensive, probably a few hours will do with a quick book or a couple YouTube tutorials. But uh, these are kind of the basic fundamentals that you need to know in order to get started with Pandas. So I'm just going to breeze through them really quickly in a couple lessons, and you can judge for yourself what point you are in your learning and whether you need to uh, establish a stronger foundation before diving into the Pandas component. So let's dive into it. So let's begin with comments. Comments, of course, are ignored by Python whenever it executes any code. Comments are indicated with the hashtag symbol, and anything after the hashtag is ignored, so we can write complete gibberish. And comments are most often used, one, of course, to provide comments or explanations about the code, and two, to uh, make a line of code invalid so that it's not processed. So for example, if I have a line of code like 1 plus 1, right now it's the last line of code in the cell, so it's going to be executed by Jupyter Notebook, which is going to return 2 to us. However, if we place a hashtag in front of that, it becomes a comment line and basically is ignored or not read by the Python interpreter, and we get nothing from that cell. So comments are a good way to make a line of code unread, invalid. Let's move on to data types and a quick review of that. We start off, of course, with integers. Integers are whole numbers with no fractional components. So anything from 5 to 10 to 0 to negative 1,000 is an example of an integer. We also have floating point numbers. Floating points are numbers with decimal components or fractional components. So for example, pi 3.14 is an example of a floating point number. 9.95, just coming them up with them from you know, the top of my head, is a floating point number. Negative 113.23819 is a floating point number. As long as there is that decimal point and some kind of fractional component, it is a floating point number. We, of course, have strings. Strings are just collections of characters. So for example, in double quotes, I'm going to write hello world. That is a string. It's basically just text is the easy way to describe it. Keep in mind that if you write something like an integer or a floating point within double quotes, for example, if I were to write 3.22 in here, that's being interpreted as a string. Those double quotes are what declare it as a string. So uh, keep that in mind whenever you're working with data. Sometimes you may run into a data set in pandas where it may look like a integer, but it's really being stored on the back end as a string and certain numerical calculations won't work. By the way, if you're curious about finding out what data type uh, it is that you're working with, Python has a built-in function called type. So you just write the word type followed by a series of parentheses. And within the parentheses, you just write the value and Python is going to spit out what type it is. So for example, if I type five, five is an integer. If I type in negative 100.82, that's a floating point number. You can see float right here. If I pass in a string like blah, 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 that's going to say str for string. Finally, the last data type here I wanted to explore is the Boolean. The Boolean is basically either true or false, and Booleans in Python are written in capital letters. So if I have something like a true, that's a Boolean value. We also have a false, which is a Boolean value. And once again, if I type type around uh, either one of those Booleans, it's going to give me the data type, which is bool. Keep in mind, again, that if you wrap that in double quotes, it is no longer a boolean. It becomes a string, so just be careful. And booleans being true or false are usually used for things like representing data that's either true or false, either yes or no, either on or off, that kind of stuff. So we may uh, see that, especially when we're doing things like checking conditions, checking if a condition is, is valid or not, true or false, if it evaluates to what we expect or we don't expect. So booleans are written in Python with capital letters and a couple other, I'd say probably a most other programming languages, they're written in lowercase, so just watch out for that. And finally, let's conclude this lesson with variables. Variables are placeholders. They point to a specific value or a specific object. So for example, if I have a complex expression like 25 plus 75 times 3 divided by 10, and that evaluates to 30, if I want to store that in some kind of variable so I don't have to write it again or, or you know remember how I got there, 
I can simply create a variable by putting an equal sign in front of the operation and writing the variable name in front. So for example, age is going to be equal to whatever value is set here. So um, the easiest way to memorize how this works is always to remember that what happens on the right side of the equal sign takes place first. So Python is first going to evaluate anything on the right side and then it's going to assign it to the variable on the left and age is going to reference at that point whatever that final evaluation is on the right. Similarly, uh, age here we have assigned to an integer, but we can do something like have a variable called name and assign it a value that's a string. I'm going to assign my name, Boris, and then the name variable is going to point to that string, Boris. All right, and of course to reassign to a, a variable, all we have to do is basically just use the equal sign and set a new value. And if we wanted to overwrite a variable, for example, if I wanted to take what age currently is and make it equal to that plus 5, Simply adding 5 by itself is not going to do anything. It's going to show us 35, but it's not going to overwrite the value in the age variable. Remember, this is just a temporary operation. In order to make this the new value of age while still using age, we can simply write our variable name equals and then the operation that we want to perform. Again, the reason that this is possible, this is certainly confusing to those who are new to programming, but remember that everything on the right side of the equal sign is always evaluated first. So at this moment, age is equal to 30. We're then adding 5 to that. We're getting 35, and that new value of 35 is what age is going to point to or be pointed to once we evaluate that, uh, once we execute that cell, and uh, the equal sign is used to assign this to this variable. So now that I execute that, age is going to be equal to 35. So that's a quick introduction to comments, some of the popular data types that we'll be using, as well as a quick introduction to variables. And in the next couple lessons of this Python crash course, we'll dive into some of the Python's built-in types for storage, such as lists and dictionaries. So I'll see you there.